Okay, welcome to another Wrestling Magazine unboxing. We're just, I believe, just getting shy of 200 magazines. I opened the box because I started the video and then it was really well packaged. So I decided no one wanted to spit, watch three minutes of me opening a box. So we'll get them. These aren't supposed to be in mint condition, but there's some older ones. And I thought that was kind of exciting. Just kind of see what we have, tell some stories. And if you're watching this, you're probably as big of a wrestling fan and an old magazine fan as I am. Actually, this first one doesn't seem in that bad a condition. It's kind of cool. We, I've, the wrestler, I have never seen this one. It's, it's got Roddy Piper Wants You. Warning to the Ultimate Warrior. So that's from March of 91, WrestleMania 7. Probably, but it's probably more like late 1990. And so the wrestler. I think of these are wrestlers and inside wrestlings. Hogan versus Earthquake, that's right around 1992. Remember that feud? That was a great feud. Send your card to Get Well Hulk. Sent a postcard back, which actually makes a really cool souvenir these days. Yeah, some of these aren't in as great as condition, but that was expected. We have the Steiner Brothers. They just recently got into the Hall of Fame. So if you're watching this a couple years from now, this is right after the Steiner Brothers got inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. And... That's the thing, there were so many magazines back then, so a lot of these I've, I don't have, and even though they're inside wrestling, which was, I'd call that about, I mean, Pro Wrestling Illustrated, The Wrestler, and then you almost think of like inside wrestling as one of the next ones that people bought, 1995, Predictions. Remember, look at that, look at that Undertaker picture there, as we see that. Here's one without a magazine, without a cover from 1993. But hey, it's still very readable. So th this is more of a reading collection than it is of uh, like a collectible collection. Hulk Hogan, I could be I could beat Bret Hart with my eyes closed. This is right out of Carrie Von Erichman's suicide, one of the saddest times. I actually visited the grave. I was just in Dallas again for WrestleMania, obviously, and didn't go to the grave site this time, but I have it from Dal from my WrestleMania trip in 1992. This one's kind of funny because it's got a dollar twenty-five sticker on it. I'm not sure if that's the original from like the store, or this. I just haven't seen hardly any of these. This one looks very odd, and Starcade '89. So this seems to be about the years of some of these. This is Inside Wrestling. We have some wrestlers coming up. Here's Sting. Kind of funny, we have um, the address code on some of these, so I'll have to look it up and see maybe someone famous. <laughs> the address code. So this was actually from a subscription. Our urgent plea to Hulk Hogan and the Ultimate Warrior. Team up and eliminate these men. You got Rick Rude, Mr. Perfect, The Earthquake, and The Macho King, Randy Savage. And this would have been July of 1990. That's me six results, so... Getting those in. It was always funny because like you'd go to the store in May and be like the July or the August issue would be Out on the newsstand by that time. So it's kind of fun. We have Davey Boy Smith on the cover of this one This is probably 90. It's actually 1990. So a little before his historic um, This actually looks like he was in um, WCW at that time before he came back to WWE with this historic run on 92 Wembley Stadium SummerSlam Yokozuna, man, if you watched wrestling, that would have been around, that would have been a little later, so probably around 93, this is, yeah, May of 93 is the issue, that would have been when Yokozuna, he was just unstoppable, he made a really good team with Owen Hart too, the tag team, that might have been, but yeah, they, he was, the 100 match war, Vader and Sting's secret blood pact has gone too far. So far, just kind of, it's amazing how many wrestling magazines there are, and because I have, I do not recognize a lot of these covers, and I think my last count, I have about 4,000 wrestling magazines. So that's why I buy them like this, and some of them I'll have, so I'll sell them at the shows that I'm at, some of them I'll just um, wait on. It. WrestleMania 9. Some people loved WrestleMania 9, some people hated it. Hulk Hogan comes back and he's the, is the champion. I will say that... I mean, I, if you've watched any of the shows, you know that I'm a big Hulkamaniac. I loved him, and especially as a youngster then. But, yeah, he didn't really do much after the WrestleMania 9 run. Yokozuna got it back, but it was kind of interesting to see him one more time. They weren't quite ready to put the title on Bret Hart. 
The wrestlers who could revitalize WWF in 1993, the new blood. Let's see if how well they predicted the Steiners. They didn't do much. They won the tag titles, but they didn't do much. We have Elegante, who didn't do anything. Giant Gonzalez. I guess he did have that run with The Undertaker, but now we'll look back, it was really bad. Luger, who was kind of a disappointment. And then Yokozuna. So Yokozuna was really the only one of those four that made anything happen in 93. So another... Here's, let's see the date on this one. This one's February 92, so that would have been right before WrestleMania 8. How the WWF is breaking Bret's heart. Champion frustration. We have an inside wrestling. This one is actually full results of SummerSlam 89. And we have Dusty Rhodes lives on. Would he have been... I think he's still been WCW at that point. He's getting very close to moving over. So I don't remember the exact day he moved over. We have Elizabeth on the cover of this one. Please, Elizabeth, don't wrestle share. I have seen this cover before. I'm not sure if I have it or if I've just seen it. So that's kind of a famous cover. Please, Elizabeth, don't wrestle Sherry. This was, this would have been a little later. Nope, November of 89. So this was very early after Elizabeth and the Macho Man broke up uh, in on stage. Legion of Doom. That's kind of a cool cover. And this was September 92. So going to go, that's going to be when they were in the WWE. Freebirds win the U.S. tag title on the top, too, if you can see that. That's kind of cool. We have the wrestler, what's kind of telling you about everything? Remember Papa Shango? Kind of big, famous for the late run in, in WrestleMania 8. Mid-year report, WF. These are always fun, just to get the mid-year report back. They used to do these back then. WF champion Bret Hart. I just got a, sounds like an eBay message of some kind, so... Bret Hart, the wrestler, his five most dangerous challengers. So this would have been for the world title. because This was February 93. We have Undertaker. We have Davey Boy Smith. We have Razor Ramon. We have Terry Taylor, which <laughs> that's an interesting thing in Ric Flair. So I put, put Terry Taylor back out, out there as one of the possible challengers. Ultimate Warrior, I've seen this cover before. WrestleMania's Accidental Hero from 1992. So that would have been WrestleMania 8, not WrestleMania 6. That would have been when he came down and saved Hogan, but then of course he didn't last much longer that. How much longer can we depend on Hulk Hogan? They were asking that in June of 91. So that was right after WrestleMania 7. Yeah, he, he didn't do too much after that. I mean, we had a few things. Here's the WrestleMania 11, the winners and the losers. This would be an interesting one to read. WrestleMania 11, considered by many one of the worst WrestleManias. Winners and losers. I actually did the LT Bigelow match was awesome. and But there wasn't a lot else happening there, so that will be an interesting one to read. Only Hulk Hogan can rid the WWF title of the stench of Sergeant Slaughter. Well, we actually learned that came true. And we have another Hogan cover. This one's just basic Hogan. This one's April 91, so this is this would have been before WrestleMania 7. So we have Hogan, Challenge That Remains, Sergeant Slaughter, Earthquake, and Bruno San Martini's got to eclipse the legend. So that's interesting. They always made interesting, they wanted you to buy the magazine. Interesting cover. The Ultimate Warrior wimps out. Why you won't wrestle Hulk Hogan? This is September 1990, so this was after Warrior won it at WrestleMania 6. And they didn't want the rematch. They wanted to run with the Warrior. And as we know, that didn't work out very well. Glad to see them make up with the Warrior. Can Ric Flair shatter the myth of Japanese superiority? And then we have Fujiyama versus Flair. These are all really interesting magazines. Here we go. At, here's a little older one. January of 84. Roddy Piper and Greg Valentine, so right at, probably right after Starkey 83. Dog collar match, what a match. This is an interesting, nope, and now we're back to WrestleMania 7. So we had one older one, which is kind of disappointing. Hopefully we get a few more of those, but still liking this. Would Hulk Hogan, 
would Hulk and the world forgive him? If Sergeant Slaughter said he was sorry, well, yep, he, they did. They turned him. This one looks older. Again, this one is April of 83. Yeah, these are sometimes funny. You can tell they're a little... We have Dusty Rhodes and Ernie Ladd on the cover of The Wrestler. So many... Man, I, I wasn't buying magazines in 83 yet. My first magazine I bought would have been 85, I do believe. So, kind of fun to get back to see some of those. 90, 1993 Year in Pictures, Rick Rude. Oh, Sid Vicious and Art Anderson, and they actually talked... This would be... I've never read this in an actual wrestling magazine. I, I wonder what they talked about in that. So, that would be another interesting one to read. That's why it's just so amazing how many wrestling magazines there are in the world. D-Boy Smith and Van Vader. Here we have another. This one's from 93 without a cover, so we're not going to spend too much time on that one. Who controls the balance of power in the WWF? And that is March of 93, so that would have been before WrestleMania 9. Of course, Bobby Heenan and Ric Flair. Ric Flair wouldn't have been around for too much longer. This one has the back, and look at those LJNs. And we have the final series. With the Warlord and King Haku and... Wow, that's very interesting. Actually, that's not the... That's an interesting... If you look at that one right there, it's like... That, that's not the way Haku looked in the... In the final thing. So many a six. Here we have another Inside Wrestling from March of 94. And they're giving out the Half Decade Awards on that one. Here's another 93, no cover. Seems like whoever took, probably took off the covers and, and hung them up on, on their wall. February 95. There's another one there. Here we go. This one's even farther taken apart, so... We'll just skip that one. There's not going to be much to show. It's going to be fun to read. Sting, I feel like I've conquered the world. Here we have September of 90, the awesome foursome committed to destroy the horsemen. Lex Luger, Sting, Rick Steiner, and Scott Steiner. Looks like somebody reordered on the back. Hey, remember these PWI? So even though it's inside wrestling, you can order the PWI stuff. I actually have this magazine. I've seen this one before, our Holiday Wishlist 93. Always kind of interesting. We have the inside wrestling... This was the greatest SummerSlam ever, so they're saying January of 93. So they're saying SummerSlam 92 was the greatest SummerSlam ever. And part of me says, uh, I'm not sure on that. Part of me says, oh uh, yeah, I mean, SummerSlam 92 could have been. Had a lot of stuff happening in it, so it was kind of interesting. Here we have Stop Whining and Start Winning, Hey Ric Flair. <laughs> December of 92. Vader crushes Sting. Vader always an interesting wrestler. So far, it's about what we expected from this. A lot of late 80s, early, if anything more early 90s than late 80s, even, which is fine. I mean, I don't mind that at all. And it's kind of a new... I do have a lot of magazines from the 80s, so this is just... These are always fun. I picked these up for less than a buck a piece, so it wasn't too bad. SummerSlam 92. That's the one we just said was that the best SummerSlam ever. Warrior versus Savage. We have Bret Hart versus the Bulldog. There's, yeah, Wembley Stadium. The Bret Hart versus the Bulldog actually seemed to kind of even take, um, I believe that was the main event, if I'm not mistaken, being that it was Wembley Stadium, and that it was a great match, too. Sting versus Holgan. This is Winter 95, so this is... After Hogan moved over, not sure how soon he wrestled Sting. He probably was still a face at that point, but they were... And Sting turns sadistic, hurting Jake makes me happy. And then we have another Jake the Snake Robs. Man, he was... This is 92, so... It's Jake the Snake slithers into WCW. Kind of an interesting thought because it was like um, he was that would have been 92 so Wrestlemania 8 he wrestled that would have been earlier 92 he wrestled The Undertaker obviously Wrestlemania 8 and then they kind of just used the one he did 
I'm, I know he, they tried to, to use off his big name because WWF would have been a little bigger than WCW at this point yet. And I don't know. I don't know. I just don't think he ever did, did much in WCW. And so, interesting. Here we go. Another Mr. Perfect. A tribute to Buddy Rogers. Probably just passed away. This is, this is 92 as well. Here we have the wrestler, 92 year in pictures. These are always fun. Just so. Here we have the British Bulldog. So this is 86. These are, this is a fun year. I love reading about 80, like stuff from like 86 and stuff because I don't think it's always the most covered year. So it's kind of interesting to think about that. Um, that's going to be an interesting one. Bulldogs 86. And here we go, September of 85. Here's, we're hoping to get some. The Amazing Career of Hulk Hogan, read by, if I'm looking at Gary Hart, one man game will scalp Carrie Von Eric. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool one right there. So. We have the wrestling's hottest feud uncovered. The Lawler Savage War is raging out of control. How about that, too? So, man, there's just so much history in all these. Here we have Flair versus Hogan. I'm guessing that was, no, that was 94. So that was after he went over to WCW. They were not previewing that in WWE. Hulk Samania. Why Vader should be definitely afraid of Hogan. This is, once again, Hogan in WCW, 95. Owen Hart and Yoko, hey, I mentioned them a few minutes ago and how, what a tag team they made, and they even got to be on the cover, then that's pretty cool. I mean, Owen Hart and... Here we have Bob Backlund, President Backlund, remember that? <laughs> Shawn Michaels Exposed. Diesel vs. Mike, we have the WrestleMania 11 preview. Back to the other side for a minute, we have, this is 93 with Lex Luger. Intimate Facts is everything you always wanted to know about Lex Luger. Actually, I would recommend Lex's biography. Uh, I don't, I'm not even sure it's what, it's what it's called. I just, I know he's got a biography. It's pretty good. I've, it's a really good read. Wrestler with Sid and Vader. Another Hogan cover. If you notice, like Hogan's on the cover like every like, two or three times a year. That's what sold the magazines. Another Lex Luger. He was big at one point. This was July of 93. 93 that was when he was doing his WWF thing. And we got, actually got two issues of that one. <laughs> the rest of I Quit. Terry Funk and Ric Flair. Remember that one when um, Funk came out at the... I want to say Starcade. It could have been wrong. He was one of the judges, and you kind of had the Terry Funk heel turn then. That was kind of cool. Russell Flair. Can Sting keep Luger from the NWA title belt? And of course, we have another Hogan cover Hulk Hogan Book of Lists. It's January 90. We have Muda took the Sting out of Sting. Yeah, great Muda. I met him at WrestleCon. A few years ago, and it was kind of cool because uh, I think he's, I mean, don't get too many chances to meet him over from Japan. Roddy Piper pins Randy Savage and Hulk Hogan is scared stiff. Yeah, sometimes the covers, I wonder if After made that cover. <laughs> wrestling, and this is an older, 87 Wrestling Annual. A lot of blood on this cover. And now we have an 86. Like I said, one of my favorite years to read because you don't, I mean, you kind of hear 85, you kind of hear 87, and then it's kind of like 86 sometimes gets swept over, and there's a lot of stuff that turned. We have Hulk Hogan versus Paul Orndorff there, so there's Orndorff's heel switch there. It's one of the weirdest here, like, he wasn't answering Paul Orndorff's call, so Paul Orndorff got mad and turned heel. I mean, it didn't make a lot of sense, but hey, when did stuff have to make sense back then? Wrestler Aftershocks. Hey, there you have Johnny Polo and the Quebecers. I mean, if you think of like what they've turned into since they, um, since they like left, it was like you have Raven, and then you have um, P PCO Pierre, Pierre Carl Olet. Is that? I'm not sure if I'm getting that, but it's PCO. And, I mean, I just saw him wrestle this past WrestleMania weekend. And always fun. And so, it's like... 
And of course, then Jacques Rousseau, he retired too. So, but hey, that's kind of who I thought two of those wrestlers would pretty much change. Here's Hogan. It's got, I love, I actually like this. It's like, you bought this, someone bought this probably at a grocery store at one point. Probably waiting for it to come down. Space Mountain comes down to Earth. Meet Ric Flair, family man. WCW fans demand we want Hogan. This was April 94. Lex Luger wins the WCW title but loses his fans. Oh, I have I have this issue. It's a 25-year issue. Special collector's issue. And this of the wrestler. We haven't looked at too many of these. It says a lot of color. There's not a lot, a lot of color, but it has some. I remember remember for the past 25 years. It kind of went through. I do remember this. This is a really... It was a really good read at the time. I'm sure it would still be a good read. It kind of goes down like each individual year and goes over it. So this will be, I mean, I, this one's probably buried well. I'm kind of looking forward to reading this again. This is one I, this is a very good issue. It, I believe 87? No, I'm sorry, 1991. I was way off on the year, but 25 years. Probably think of maybe the 20 year. And here we have the wrestler. With, we have Undertaker and we have some more WCW stuff. You have the LJNs, Batman. They were on the back of all these wrestlers. That's kind of cool. That actually, probably, that that seriously, those LJN ads, you could like take them off and frame them, and they're probably worth the price I paid for the magazine. So, another Hogan cover. You have a Sting cover, Sting and the Ultimate Warrior, running a parallel course to greatness. Of course, the original Blade Runners, and another Hogan cover, Hulkamania, the Fall and Rise, a decade. So this is June ninety. That's. Most of the stuff was right around that time. The rest are Hulkster under siege. Another Hogan cover. How many, so how many Hogan covers is that? Here we have. I, I want to take a look at some of these back. So here you can because the next one's going to be different. But here you have the body knows all. You could one nine hundred number with Jesse on the back of the inside wrestling. This is Earthquake and Hogan. And then the next one you have the one nine hundred Captain Lou number. One nine hundred Lou for you. Captain Lou Albano talks off the cuff and cuts no slack. Hogan and Sid. And not to be outdone, you have the 1900 Hulk number. I actually still 1904. Ooh, no, this one changed a little. This one's WCW Hulkster because it was 1900454HULK in WWF. This is WCW Hulk. So it's, I didn't realize WCW had a Hulk. It makes sense. So this must be a little later. Yeah, this is April 95. But 1-900-454-H-U-L-K. How many of you called that number in the... That would have been 89.90, I'm assuming. And here you just have the Pro Wrestling Illustrated hotline then as well. As we Actually, I didn't even look at... We should look at the cover of that one. Here we have Hogan and Flair there. Let's go back to, to show you the front of this one. This one actually has 1995 Inside Wrestling Computer Tournament. <laughs> remember those? Yeah, I remember those. Uh, I bet that was kind of interesting to read at the time. Maybe nowadays. And our holiday wish list for '94. Oh, we had, had the '93 holiday wish list earlier. Those sometimes make good magazines. I'm about to lose a pile of magazines. I'm sorry, so I'm gonna have to self-correct here. And just, I don't really feel like a whole pile of magazines falling. And that's how many we've got. Well, since we've been looking at the back here, we have the Royal Rumble now in Genesis. Royal Rumble on the Super Nintendo. I'll say it, and maybe I should do like a whole video on wrestling. Sorry, I had to uh, just cut out there because I used my whole 20 minutes, but Royal Rumble. Royal Rumble Super Nintendo was such a fun game. That was that was like the best game for its time. I mean, like obviously it's not going to hold water to the games of today, but for its time, that was such an amazing game. And Royal Rumble... For the Super Nintendo, I had a friend who really wasn't that much into wrestling even, so he would come over and be doink, and we would wrestle tag team matches, and he would just go up to the top. He knew how to go up to the top rope and then do doink special move off the top rope, which was like the whoopee cushion. We just hours and hours of fun. If you're anywhere close to my age, you probably enjoy that, and I know some of you probably enjoy the newer games that I don't really play. The newer, I kind of stopped after. Honestly, I stopped after Super Nintendo. I kind of haven't really played a lot of video games as an adult. I actually do appreciate some of the wrestling ones. And so maybe someday I'll be cool to do a story. Here we, another Hulk, the beginning of the end, will Hulk Hogan get burned by Friendly Fire, Macho Man, always interesting. But yeah, how many Hogan covers were there? 
back in these times. Here we have a lot of Hogan, the Hogan Flair at War, so there's another half Hogan cover. Inside Wrestling. Roods out, Piper's in, and the fans love it. Yeah, they added quite a few there for a while. Another Hogan cover. Why the WWF will never let him rest in peace. This is from September 92. So it would have been after WrestleMania 8. So he still is coming back for WrestleMania 9. And we have Papa Shang and the Ultimate Warrior there. We, have a we haven't seen a lot of Macho Man covers. And here we have one. This would have been one-on-one -on -one Missy Hyatt versus Medusa. I just saw Missy Hyatt at WrestleCon. Talk to her for a little bit. I'm going to show the back of this one because UWF Beach Brawl. Nice to see them getting... That, UWF was actually decent for a little while. Um, that would have been like, I think, about 9091. And, of course, we have the Hogan cover, Burning Mad. Beating Slaughter for the title was not enough. Yeah, look at all the Hogan... We have... I did not realize we have we have the UWF power line. We, we'll have to do like a whole video just on... 1900 numbers. And I did not realize that Paul Orndorff, or actually, this is all UWF because um, here Paul Orndorff, Steve, Dr. Death Williams, B. Brian Blair, Cowboy Bob Orton, Colonel De Beers, Iceman Parson, Steve Wild Thing, Ray, John Tolis, and Cactus Jack. $2 per minute you can hear the, you can spend on the UWF power line. I guess if you watch the UWF, you probably were into that. Steiner and the Legion of Doom. That's an interesting matchup right there. The Bloodlust of X-Champions. Macho King and Warrior. What a few they had. Now we go into the WBF Hate Triangle. Hogan Piper Warner. This, has to, oh, this is February 87, so it's really late 86. That's kind of an interesting one. I'm guessing that Piper, well, he, he would have been very close to being a face by this time. Because if they're like... I mean, it had to be like November or even October of 86. They were starting to plant the seeds. And so, um, yeah, it'd be interesting. That's going to be an interesting one to read. Sting's Memo from a Maniac. Sting actually did make a lot of covers back at one point. Here's, you have, I've never seen this cover. That's a Hot Summer Special, Inside Wrestling, July of 95, so a little later. It says some color stuff. Let's see. We have we oh, remember these things like news from the, and then you you'd go to different wrestling sites and do that. Let's see what else they have. Sorry for going too fast. Here we have the coolest babe. That's that is Sunny, I do believe. We call her Tammy Finch. Tammy Finch. Yeah, I think the I thought it was Cinch, so it's probably just a play of her name. If I'm not, I, I'll just I'll just admit I don't know for sure. So. I can't, um, they advertise color, that, there was not a lot of color in that, there was a little bit right there, so, in the hot summer special. Here's a Hogan Savage, this one's a connection, so this one's 91, so this one's back when Savage might be coming back. SummerSlam 90, we have December 91. Inside Wrestling, October 94. This is a, the Wrestler, WF Mid-Year Report. Let's just take a look inside of this as we are headed towards the end of what they do. They, here they give you the grades. And this was, well, let's see the grades they got. They got Action B, Talent Roster C+, Competitiveness B-, Business C+, and then look at that Public... Image F. So we'll have to say, I'm gonna guess that probably had to do with the drug scandals maybe at the time. Let's see. Pay per views B plus, arena shows B minus, they got TV production A minus, announcer C minus. They're not like the announcer at the time either. Fan, so fan relations with the A, they got the best. And they obviously did not do well in public. So this is, oh, this is September 95. That's interesting that they would be that low on public image. In 95, I mean, they lost Hogan, but they were still. I guess that maybe that was, maybe that was when they were kind of getting a little more raw, as you would say, and then they thought that was bad. Inside Wrestling, Vader Mania wants to squash Hulk Hogan. 
Here we have WCW mid-year report. Well, let's, we just watched, we just saw the WWE mid-year report. Let's see if we, do we get similar grades on this one? Um, not sure they're going to give us the exact same thing. It'd be interesting to compare the two. Apologize for this one didn't pop up. Okay, here we go. This is a little different, but let's see what. Let's see. Uh, let's check the year. This is this is 1995 as well. So we actually should compare the two. Action B minus. Talent roster A minus. Competitiveness B. Business C. Public image C plus. So they say WCW had a better public image, but pay, lot, much worse pay per view C plus. Horrible arena shows with the D. And then even, but the announcers were the A. So 95, which I mean this. This is October 95, so yeah, Jim Ross, because Jim Ross would have already been over, oh, much long, yeah, so they like the announcers way better than WCW for some reason. That surprises me. I don't know exactly who would have been the lead, considered the lead announcers at that point, so that's interesting. Steamboat and Ric Flair, 94. Bulldog and the Warrior. Changing of the guard. Here we have Imagine Wrestling Today if Hulk Hogan had lost the Loser Leaves Wrestling match. If the Von Erichs had all lived. And if the Ultimate Warrior had died in the coffin. Okay. A mind-boggling special section. Yeah. Gotta love the magazines. That's what they had to sell. They had to put something on the cover to sell. Here we have British Bulldogs, but we have the bonus section, the Wrestling Book of Lists. I'm going to see if we can see that. And we, we have like some Jericho... Is that, I believe this is the bonus section. Actually, it's a pretty big book of lists, obviously. The Wrestling Book of Lists. Ric Flair's 10 all-time favorite blondes. Beth Flair, Anna Nicole Smith, Phil Sims, Marilyn Monroe, Cheryl Teeks. Okay, I don't understand. So it's, it's kind of an odd book of lists. Let's see if there's anything. It's really... Um, Erin Archeister's favorite tax deductions. Yeah, so it's just kind of a... Top 10 wrestlers with one word names. They give Sting the top one there. Top 10 wrestlers who made Terry Funk the sorest. Dory Funk Jr. was number one there. Top 10... Let's, let's do this one together. Top 10 heinous, heinous, heinous acts in wrestling history. So the most heinous was Gino Hernandez blinds, blinds Chris Adams with a caustic substance in 1986. Number two was Larry Zabisco turning against Bruno San Martino, his protege, 1979. Owen Hart turns against Breast Hart, 1994. So, so, so far we're doing some heel turns here. Brutus Beefcake turns against Hulk Hogan in 1994, third heel turn in a row. Randy Savage slaps Elizabeth in 1989. Andre the Giant pulls the cross off Hogan's neck in 1987. John Tolis throws medicated power in Fred Blassie's face, 1971. Okay, so they're going a little old school there. Superstar Graham mutilates Bob Backlund's WF World title belt in 1983. The Undertaker locks the Ultimate Warrior in an airtight cough in 1991. And Stan Hansen breaks Bruno San Martino's neck with a lariat in 1976. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what we used to read back then, before the internet. Here we have another Hogan. Say your prayers and take your vitamins and kicks butt. That's Hogan's new commandments for the wrestler. Looks like definitely a WCW Hogan. Ric Flair and Luger. So if you know, I mean, all these things, most of these were, have been involved from 90 to 95, and you get like pretty much the same covers on all of them. Here we have a 95 Christmas wish list. For Hogan, a final retirement. Well, we knew that wasn't happening anytime soon. Another Hogan cover. Hogan's contract with America. This is LT. Doesn't mean Lawrence Taylor will be back after WrestleMania. So this is right around WrestleMania 11. So we had 95 there. Wrestler. The stuff fans always should know. What's your wrestling IQ? Yeah, if you saw that on the newsstand, you'd be like, well, I have to prove my wrestling IQ is better than my friend's wrestling IQ. This one's kind of interesting. 30th anniversary collector's edition. It's a little beat up, but I've never seen this before. And I guess we had the 25th a little earlier. It's about the same. That's kind of a cool cover, too. Some of these... I think the magazines... I don't think they were as collected in the mid-90s. Because the, the internet would have been out pretty... Yeah, the internet would have been out in, like, 96. So that's when we started getting all of our wrestling. Now uh, that's when there wasn't quite as many magazines to go. The wrestler Hulk Hogan and Sid Justice are mere pawns. Ric Flair coming over to WWF. 
Ric Flair's hour of power. Can one man stop him at WrestleMania 8? Rumble, he rumbled past 29 men. Yep, Royal Rumble 92. Pretty good. Good use of Flair there. The Magic is back in WCW. We got Steamboat. We have Jushin Sunder Lager. We have Rick Rude. We have Rick Steiner. Yeah, this is okay, but this is okay. Paul Bear, a hell of a way to earn a living. Yep, that, that's your that's your typical cover back in 1993-1994. And we have another has after the Survivor Series in this Tuesday in Texas has the WWF title suffered irreparable damage. So right before Flair wins the Rumble, remember that you got like you got another pay per view. It's like now you have to do this Tuesday in Texas, and you got Savage and Snake there too. McMahon offers a bounty on Flair. Will Vince pay the piper? So, <laughs> so many. Here, that's a pretty cool cover. And this is from, this is actually from 92. So this is a little late. I thought this was maybe going to be from the mid 80s, but this one was from 92. Legion of Doom. So I'm in their WWF days. Here we have a Flair Hogan. Here we have a mid, another mid-year report. This is, it looks around 93, actually 94. It's the King. Jerry the King was making a few waves at that point. Wrestling from A to Z with another wrestler. And 1996, the year in pictures. Got a few left. Another rowdy. It's time... Ten years after rock and wrestling, it's time for Rowdy to get Roddy to get Rowdy again. And here we have Sting and Flair. Why Sting's friendship is tearing Ric Flair apart. Lex Luger has made Ric Flair a broken man. This is ninety. It's an Undertaker with a graveyard. The resurrection of the Undertaker. This is September '94, so this would have been after WrestleMania 10, before WrestleMania 11. We have Lex Luger and Bret Hart on the cover. Of this one from May of '94. Ted DiBiase, Inside Wrestling '94. Is that '94? This is November '94. Those sorts later. But he would have still been, because he would have still had the Million Dollar Corporation at WrestleMania 11 in 95. So he was still WWF Million Dollar Corporation at that point. A Bret Hart. Bret Hart is, is the WWF's only true champion. This is from April 92, but it's funny because is that him holding up the... I don't No, I don't believe that's the WrestleMania 4 battle where that was, it must be a different trophy of some kind. Probably some King of the Ring tournament type tournament or something. WrestleMania will be their biggest battle of Hogan and Sid Justice. This is a pretty cool cover of Sting. This would have been from June of 92. It's just Sting on the cover. New champion, new era. So, pretty cool cover, I will admit. Get rid of this, and we're running out of places to put these here. Another cool cover with an old school Undertaker is regaining the WWF belt an impossible undertaking. The more people are packed well, so I do appreciate that from the seller. Now we don't need all the paper. Here we have another Hogan cover Hulk Hogan versus Yokozuna. The Hulkster faces his biggest challenge ever. Check out that back. Those are some cool posters. You get all four of the super special editions for 10 bucks. You have a whole Savage, and this is 87. This is April 87. So Steamboat Savage stealing the show at WrestleMania, even though I think that's, I'm guessing since it's an April issue, that's probably before the match actually happens. They were, remember when Savage, um, in, the, in essence, broke his larynx, Steamboat's larynx, and that's why the feud was so big. Ric Flair is back. We have the Captain Lou 1900 number again. Inside Wrestling, the Steiners, and we're going to have one left. 
And it is shot in my, that's a kind of a cool cover. This is just some, they were some really cool covers I've never seen before. And that just shows how many wrestling magazines there are. Well, hey, thanks for sticking with me the whole, I didn't count how many we had here, but like I said, they were a little less than a dollar an issue. We didn't get any home runs, like the rare issues where I got the Hulk Hogan rookie that one time and we really didn't get anything old enough, but should be some really fun reading. If you like wrestling magazines as much as I do, then um, I'm sure you could appreciate how much fun of reading this is going to be. Thanks, I'll see you guys next time.